Hey guys, well, school is out. Three day weekend, yay. It's hot, whoo, man, it's hot. Seventy two degrees hot, and I'm really hot in this outfit. <laughs> but must wear the gear, must wear the gear. Well, come on, man. Everybody hugging the line as usual. Damn it. Come on, go. Oh, gosh, move up. Of course, she has her uh, side rear view mirror shut like a dummy. So I got 57.2 miles. Oh, I don't like water. There's water. Come on. Oh my. Yesterday was crazy. Hopefully today is not uh, anything like yesterday on the road. Jeez, man, oh man. It was rough. And on the way home yesterday, uh, it'll come out. I'm going to put a video out there. There's a kid on a scooter that almost uh, took off right in front of me. Pretty scary stuff. It makes me not want to drive near sidewalks at all. So I was talking to my uh, ex-brother-in-law yesterday and um, he knows a lot of people that deal with engines and mechanics and things like that. So I was telling him about my car and he said he would call around for me and he actually found a place, I don't know if it's in LA or in Orange County, but he found a place that has an engine. and. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe how expensive the prices have gotten on these engines. And uh, there's a copper there. So he said they used to be like 250, 450 the most. Oh, right. Now it's a thousand. Yeah, it's a thousand now. So it's a thousand one hundred. And the lady told him she needs to do payments. She could do payments too. Um, yeah, so prices have gone up, but 1100 that's like the cheapest I've, I've heard of. Everything else is like two to 3000 Crazy. Two to $3,000 plus you gotta find somebody to put it in, so. And he has a guy that he knows. His prices, I'm sure, have gone up. If not, they, they should go up because, you know, he's got to buy stuff to uh, get that engine in. Also, you know, those prices have gone up. So I'm lucky I have my bike because I would have to take my gas guzzler, my camper, van, to work, and uh, that would cost me a pretty penny. Damn, it is trafficy today again. What the heck? Oh, well, no. Hmm. I know we have Monday off, but that, I don't know. That could be people are getting out of town. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Man, it is backed up. It's Friday, people. Come on. It should not be like, oh, there's a copper. So Alan called out and 
told me he was going to be there today, and I was like, oh, dude, it's easy money. But he has studies to do and a lot of work for his uh, finals and stuff. But I was telling him, we have Monday off, dude. And he's like, what? <laughs> Probably already called out, though. It sounds like it. I don't know. He told me he wasn't showing up today, so... Here comes another biker. Now watch. I move out of his way. Watch this. You see, that's how you do it. I can't. I'm not going to keep. I can't keep up with that dude. <laughs> I think I can. He's not really going that fast, but like 50 something. I don't know, but it is uncomfortable. Man, another copper cracking down today. No, thank you. I went to go take care of a ticket in downtown and. This idiot was on my ass. I was in my car. This idiot was on my ass and I was trying to hurry up and rush because he was tailgating me. And then the light turns red and I'm like, oh crap. So I stop and he eased up. He was like, oh, light's turning red. So I'm gonna slow down now. And so it looked like he wasn't even tailgating me by the time we got to the light. And then I went into the crosswalk a little bit and it took a picture of me. And they said, and they wrote me and said I ran the red light. Fuckers, man. I was like, what? Not run the red light. So they said, well, you could just pay it off. Uh, it's going to be, you know, $600. Really? Come on. I don't think so. So it's been extended to May, and I have to show up in court. And they'll probably say, well, once you pass the crosswalk a little bit, you know, it takes a picture of you, and we consider that running the red light. I could see them saying some BS like that. Because that's the way it is over here. They give you a ticket for any old thing. So when you get pulled over here, uh, They'll say, let me see your license and registration. They don't tell you like what you did or nothing. And you can ask them and they'll say, I need to see your license and registration. And it's like, well, what did I do? I need to see your license and registration. So you can't even say like, can you just give me a warning? Because they'll be like, well, you don't even know what you did. And once they get your license and registration, that's pretty much it. Oh, my, my partner's already writing out the ticket. Once it's written out, we can't take it back. I mean, it's just these stupid little games, you know, that they play with you. Instead of just saying, hey, you know, uh, you're, you're driving too fast, you know. Um, oh, they don't want to have any argument with you. They don't want to have you say, like, well, the reason why is because, you know, this idiot was on my ass or whatever because they'll just say well should have just switch lanes well I couldn't because you know there's all this traffic well you could have done this or you could have done that or blah, 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 blah. it's like always something you know they just want to give you the ticket and they're expensive as you know what look at that smog they're very expensive of course squeeze the tank so I can get pressure off my hands. I tend to uh, pull the bars too tight, the grips too tight. Sometimes, not all the time. When I'm conscious of it, I just let loose and then I just squeeze my the tank. Yesterday, um, I was being pretty snarky 
but you know the thing is is that um, now I understand what my co-worker was talking about when he said I'm sick of people cutting me off all the time I have to take a break from writing because you get tired of it now I understand I didn't feel like that before, but now it's like I get it. It gets old. Where are you planning on going, dude? I know you see me. See? Just... Uh, okay. You want to play that game? Play that game then. Thank you. See, I wish I could rev up my engine right here, but it's to make people a little bit more aware of me. Come on, dude. Move. It's always a dude. <laughs> Pay attention, people. Stop eating your Mexican burrito. Or drinking your coffee. Your Get off your phone. Oh, but the coffee tastes so good. Mm. Oh, there's a motorcycle trying to get by. What? It's starting to get hot, so... Oh. It's nice. I like it, but... When you got a bunch of gear on, it could get very... Not so nice. See, it's 7.52. I left at 7.20, right? I think it was. Or 7... Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. 7.25, somewhere... I don't know. And look, I'm already here. Yesterday was brutal. Today, eh, not so bad. And look at Gotham City. Look at that. Everybody's in their offices. Some people are getting fired today. Some people are getting promoted. <laughs> oh. I, you know what? I don't miss working in an office by any means. By any means. I do not. Office politics. The BS you put up with. No union to help you out. Yuck. No thank you. When I worked in downtown, I worked for a private company. And it was actually really good. The owner was really nice. He would give us bonuses every Christmas. and For the most part, people were, were nice. Except for, like, the office manager. Wow, nice slick move, dude. Um, the office manager wasn't very nice. Neither was the the one person HR person with, I don't, I don't remember her name. Well actually I do but I won't say it. But <laughs> Not that anybody would know but it's just the attitude of like you guys are assistants. We are a manager and an HR department in one. Um, you know, trying to get control, get control over people and things like that. I mean, it's just complaining about stupid things. I don't miss that at all. Or that feeling of, you know, superiority, like, oh, we're higher on the ladder than you. So you have to do what we say. That's the kind of attitude and feeling I always got. But but the owner was so nice and, you know, he always treated everybody fair. They had a really nice 401k. Oh, that was reckless. Um, so they had a really nice 401k and stuff like that. And they matched, which I did pretty good on because, you know, I used to put away money every month because they matched it so it was wonderful so I still have that with them 
And then 9-11 happened and everything changed. I got laid off. Some other people got laid off. And that's about the time. Yeah, that is the time I went back to school. So, in hindsight, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I decided to follow what I wanted to do. Like, you know, stop making the excuse, oh, I've got this good job. I don't want to lose my job. I want to hold on to my job. And I, uh decided that now that I was laid off, it was time to go back to school, finish up, and do what I truly love. So, and at the time, it didn't feel like a blessing, believe me. It didn't feel like that at all. It felt like I felt pretty upset about it. But sometimes it's for the best. And in my case, it was for the best. And then I went back to school. I got a job. You guys probably don't remember a place called Circuit City, but I used to work at Circuit City. I sold TVs. I sold videos. I sold games. I I liked that job because everybody that I was going to college with was working there. <laughs> a lot of people. Different majors, of course. But um, it was kind of fun. It was like... Because... You know, you see these people at school, you hear about what they're going through, what's going on with them, and, like, their classes and things like that. And and they would give you time off for, like, your finals and things like that, so that was nice. Without giving you a big lecture about how you're calling out. <laughs> you know, when you wanted to do, like, maybe if you wanted more hours, they'd give you more hours, and then they cut your hours if you didn't want that many just to work with you you know which was really nice that's what I loved about working there other than that I didn't like it because we had to work Black Fridays and things like that I didn't like that but oh it was in Santa Monica and Santa Monica is like literally like so um the parking is so bad, and they didn't provide parking. So if you're running late, you had to park across the street, which is like five dollars. And you know you're working this job that's not even paying you that much. So it's like kind of a lot to have to pay that. <laughs> um, or you'd have to park across the street and move your car every two hours. So you'd have to tell your supervisor, hey, I gotta leave the floor, I gotta go move my car, and they'd be like, all right, go ahead. Um, or you'd pay, like, full price for the day, which would be, like, you know, 30 bucks or whatever. Not worth it. And then, or you could park, like, a mile away and hope that you understand the signs, because the signs are really long, and you can't park on this time, you can't do this, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. So, um... That was not fun. I hated that. It'd be nice to have like a little backrest right here, but those things look goofy. <laughs> they, look, they just don't, I don't know, what stylish. Do I would like a backrest on my Mustang seat, but they don't. Um, unless I, I buy one and I modify it. There's an upholstery place down the street for me that's really good. They could probably do it. So, yeah, I don't really, I don't miss working in office. Other than my friends that I worked with over there in downtown, I, like my friend Angela, she was really fun to hang out with. Some other people there. But me and Angela would go to the gas company, which is across the street from where we worked, and we would go to the cafeteria there. They have a really, really good cafeteria. Um, and <laughs> she'd say, girl, I'm getting a salad today. I gotta watch my weight. 
and I'd be like, oh, uh, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to get a hamburger. <laughs> I was always eating, like, crappy food, but the chefs there are so good. So it was like, yummy, yum, yum. Very nice, good stuff, right? Is this a bus stop? I don't remember this being a... Oh, gosh. Okay. I guess I could have gone around him, but... I hate this turn because it's uneven pavement, and it just throws you off. Anyway, ugh, it's exhaust. So, she'd be like, girl, I'm getting a salad today. I gotta watch my weight. So we'd go over there, and the salad, I'm not kidding you guys, would be like a million calories. Like, it had like so much stuff on it plus on top they would pile on fried chicken and then douse it in all this like cream sauce and like oh my god <laughs> salad sauce or whatever ranch dressing I don't know what she put on it blue cheese that, that's what it was blue cheese <laughs> She's like, girl, I know it looks bad, but it's a salad. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like dinner. It's dinner, girl. Sorry, dude, I can't stop right there. I'll fall over. So... That was always, it was always fun to, to hang out with her. And then of course the Christmas parties would be, they'd always have it at this really expensive restaurant and it would be like really fun. Everybody would just get wasted of course. And they'd say, you can bring a friend. I'd always bring my crazy friends with me, one of them. It'd always be one invite, and then uh, just hang out all night and have fun, dance. It would be a lot of fun. But yeah, I don't miss those days of working in the office. Dang, it's already 8.05. Fish. All right. You know, I gotta, um, I've gotta just come here on like a, on a weekend. It's hard, because I don't really want to come here on a weekend. Like, I don't want to, because it always feels like I'm coming to work, right? It's like I want a break, but what's going on ahead? What is that? Um, but it would be nice to like cruise West Hollywood and places like that. Why am I sitting there waiting? Um, West Hollywood, I haven't been to West Hollywood in so long. Hollywood, just, it would be, oh, he pulled somebody over. Um, but it would be nice to, like, cruise around that area. Because I always come to the same old area. Because of work, of course. I don't want to go up to the Hollywood sign yet. That's a little too advanced for me because, you know, it's very hilly or Hollywood Hills. Even I love it up there. I used to drive my car up there, overlook all of LA. It's beautiful. Go up to the observatory, Griffith Park, like all these places. But um, I don't think I'm ready to do that on my bike just yet. But it would be nice. Like Mulholland Drive, that's a nice drive. Um, that would be a nice cruise, but again, hills, I don't do well with hills right now, not, not yet at least. That's something, I don't know, 
I'll have to like maybe I could practice a little bit more at Signal Hill. Something yeah. easy, nothing too crazy. I could do that. That might work. I just I need to practice the hill thing. But one thing I notice is that like when I'm on a hill, it's not as scary as much as it was before. I kind of understand a little bit more on the shocks in the front. Because when I'm on a hill, they just literally, like, as soon as I start to go, they just flatten down. Which is kind of nice, because you don't feel like you're falling back. Um, I've noticed that on small hills. And I'm sure it's like that on steeper hills. But it's just getting used to that feeling that you're not falling back. It's just yeah. actually it's pushing forward. These streets are so uneven. It's so annoying. It's like somebody just... What is this guy doing? He looks at me like, where are you going? I'm going to work, dude. Where are you going? What you doing? People be in my way and stuff. Ugh. Here we go. Another day. A million things to take off.